Uh, what do you do to build your faith, or what are your study habits? Dan's got a great formula for this. <laughs> Dan has three steps that it will rock your life. Yeah. 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 Point so A, B, and write, C. Just write these down. Step one. Go ahead, Dan. Sure Step number one. I really did one time have a group of ladies come up. They were so sincere. They had their pens and their pads. And they really did this. They said, uh, we just want you to tell us just how you get into the presence of God, how much time is on your knees, how much is prostrate, how long do you this, how long do you that? And I'm like, <laughs> see, it's a relationship. I don't make appointments with God and I don't meet with God. He's in me. So when am I ever apart from him? I talk to him all the time. I commune with him. When I read the word, I never read it for information. I read it to know him. So I honor the word of God. If he's wanted it above his name, I just don't read my Bible. I've never read my Bible for you. I like to preach a sermon. I read my Bible to know him. And out of knowing him, I have something to say to you. Got it? So take his love personal. Receive his forgiveness. Receive his mercy. Wake up knowing you're a son, knowing you're a daughter. Say yes to every yes that shouts through Jesus Christ and just be his kid. You get it? And when you open the Bible, ask Holy Spirit. Just welcome him. Thank him. He's in your life to reveal Christ to you. Like I so appreciate Holy Spirit. I'll say you're amazing in my life. You reveal Christ to me. You show me things to come. You're amazing. You're transforming my life into the image of God. And thank you. As I read this word, you'll open it up and illuminate it in me so that I can see what I've become. So I do everything out of relationship. When I'm driving in my car, I just commune. I'll just talk to him. Just would you and I drive for a couple hours in a car and not talk? Why do we forget he's there and he never becomes our reality? All, the, all of a sudden he becomes our belief system and our doctrine takes the place of relationship. My belief system should never take the place of my relationship. Belief system just thrusts me into relationship. So I just commune with him. I let him be as real as he desires to be by making myself available to him. It's real simple. There is no plan, no steps, no method. They were messing with you. <laughs> Amen. I wasn't making fun of the question because it's, no. it's a viable question. It's a question. viable question. Because a lot of people, like when you hear people talk about soaking or the presence, and we don't feel anything. And so if we don't feel it, then he's not there. And that's deception because we try to live by feelings, right? We try to, if you don't feel him, it doesn't mean he's not there. We're supposed to walk by faith, not by feelings, right? So what I've noticed is going into a place where it's quiet. I don't care where it is. Just being quiet before him and saying, God, I'm, I'm not here to get anything from you. I'm here to be like you. I'm not even requesting any, I don't want anything except for you. Right. So God, I don't even know. Listen, this is the first thing saying, God, I really don't know you. I really don't understand who you are. And I'm, I'm humbling myself and I'm coming before you. You said, if I seek you in Matthew 6, if you seek him in the secret place, he'll reward you in the open. So God, I'm asking you right now, I'm coming into a secret place. No one's here but me and you, you and I. And all I want is to know you. So God, help me to know you and be humble and put yourself in that place, in that posture. And admit, look, God, I really don't know you like I need to. It's a prayer every day because I don't know him like I need to, but I want to know him more. Like I know him, but it's never enough. But posture yourself in a place where you just say, God, I don't know you like I need to. And I really want to. So here I am, Lord. Really. Yeah. I know I'm taking, we're taking long with this question, but it's so vital, it's so huge. So I just want to make one comment, and, and you guys just love me and hear me. I'm not, I, this isn't like over-challenging. As a pastor for years, I've realized and recognized that a lot of things that I minister to to people, their questions, concerns, their life, it comes from a lack of God reality. A lot of people's weaknesses in, in life and their cycles, it's a lack of God reality. It proves to me that we've known all about God. We've sat under every sermon, but we haven't come to the place of knowing him. Like knowing God keeps my life so clean. Like there's things that aren't even a possibility with me, okay? See how weird I'm getting right now? See, it's just, it's funny. See, like I'm not being pulled and tugged in a million directions. 
I love him. I know him. God reality actually keeps me in a very holy and beautiful place. Like there's things in my life that aren't even an option because of God reality. It's called the fear of the Lord. It's knowing him. And a lot of us know so much about him, but knowledge can puff you up and knowledge can even take the place of knowing him. But love edifies. This is eternal life, church, that we might know him. I can't express to you enough the importance of getting alone when no one's looking in the world. And just saying, hey, Father, I'm here. Thanks for loving me. Thanks for revealing yourself to me. Holy Spirit, thanks for touching my heart with revelation. And all of a sudden, you find yourself in this communion with God. When I first got saved, I would close my bedroom door on the way out because I knew I'd have to open it on the way in. And the funnest part of going in there was opening it, sneaking in and saying, here I am. And I'd close it. Oh, so cool. Now, that grew me into a place of intimacy where I don't do that anymore. I just walk with him. But in that season, he became very, very real to me. Like to the point where I don't preach manifestations. You didn't hear me preach manifestations one time this week about feelings or sensual or nothing. But to the point where I would open the bedroom door and say, hey, Father, and his presence would just come over me. And I would like shut the door and didn't know what to do sometimes. I'd just kneel, jump on the bed, cry. I was just, oh. But... I went there by faith, believing he'd meet me there intimately, and that turned into an everyday, 24-7, knowing him. And that God reality, church, will protect your life from some of the cycle things and the silly things that stumble our lives. It's a good day when those things aren't even an option, because he's so amazing. Amen.